Well, I think this episode was the calm before the storm of what's to come in the latter half of season two of the show. With this episode being titled Close Enough to Touch, every arc definitely represented that. For example, we saw that things were on the cusp of being ruined due to the jeopardizing of the dinner with the Duke. Agnes and Ada were having conflict due to Ada getting married to Reverend Forte, and Mr. Fortune and Peggy were close to being attacked. However, in the end, everything managed to end up okay. With there being quite a lot to actually take away from this episode and it planting seeds to grow into stories for the rest of the season, let's recap, break down, and explain all that there was to take away from this episode. So let's get into it. Here is The Gilded Age Season 2 Episode 5 Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. Ada and Agnes's Conflict this was one of the main arcs that was getting the limelight in this episode, and as expected, we saw that the news that Ada had to share with Agnes fell on ears that came back with a harsh attack. Agnes didn't want Ada to get married, and we even saw that a couple of episodes ago, when Ada was expressing her interest in Reverend Forte, she was quite against it and was being passive-aggressive towards her sister. When Ada revealed to Agnes that she was getting married, one line that Agnes responded with stuck with me. She said, what do you know about being the duty of a wife? You're a spinster, showing that she was still trying to put her down even in her happiest moment. For those that don't know, a spinster is somebody that's unmarried and considered to be an older woman. So it showed us that Ada being like that worked perfectly for Agnes and her situation. Within this episode, we saw that Agnes mentioned that she wouldn't be attending the wedding and nor would her son Oscar due to the fact that she disagreed with it. This left Ada in a conflicted state where she didn't want to lose her chance of happiness, but she also didn't want to ruin her relationship with her sister. However, we saw the true side to Ada when she chose to be with the person that she loved and gave herself a chance at living her own life, rather than in her sister's shadow. We saw Agnes went to Reverend Forte's office and was speaking with him and was expressing her discomfort over the fact that she was soon to be losing her sister. But even in that situation, he wasn't budging and was showing just how much he loved Ada, something that you'd think most siblings and family members would be happy about. But it was in this scene where we saw exactly why Agnes was reacting in the way that we were seeing. We found out that she was fearful of being alone. It actually turned out that Agnes valued Ada far more than we realized, and the prospect of losing her was something that she wanted to avoid happening. She was also thinking about what their parents would think of the situation, to which the Reverend responded with, you cater for the dead by neglecting the living, a line that I thought hit home so clearly and summed up exactly what Agnes was doing. She was neglecting her sister and being selfish. At the end of the episode, on the day of Ada's wedding, we saw that Agnes came downstairs and wasn't prepared to go, but it was upon Bannister saying to her that he was going to support Ada and that she should do the same, otherwise she'd regret it for the rest of her life, that once Ada was then down the aisle. As the ceremony was about to begin, the doors opened and Agnes walked in and showed her support and sat down next to her family. It was a moment that was really lovely to watch and it did actually evoke some emotion out of me, seeing how she'd listened to what everybody had said to her and had then realized that she was the person that was in the wrong, something that she didn't often think or realize. The Russell's Dinner This was the other main arm of the episode where we saw that following Bertha inviting the Duke to stay with her, she organized a dinner for people to attend in honor of the Duke's presence. Bertha is caught up amongst the war that she's got with Mrs. Winterton and also the war between the Met and the Academy. With Mrs. Winterton looking to find a way to bring Bertha down a peg or two, we saw that she'd arranged to work with Mr. Barnes, one of Bertha's footmen, and also Mr. Schneider, a chef that was cooking the meals and she planned on sabotaging the dinner from within. The initial plan was to make the food taste disgusting, and the backup plan was to spill the soup on the Duke. However, both plans were foiled due to Mr. Watson noticing that suspicious activity was going on between the pair. This is something that I think is going to tie into Mr. Watson's narrative of not wanting to leave. We heard George say to him that he'd be missed, and with him being an invaluable part of the evening and him essentially saving it from being disrupted and it being a disaster, I feel that's going to add to the respect that he gets from his colleagues and the Russells, and the fact that maybe they might not want him to leave. There was a line that was spoken in this episode between Mr. McAllister and Bertha where he said, in order to win the war, you've got to bring out your biggest weapons. And in this instance, it was Bertha's daughter Gladys. She hoped to pair her up with the Duke, something that would do wonders for her position in society. Bertha is all about being the top socialite, and by her daughter being married to a Duke, it would be something that would pretty much make her untouchable and also cement her place of where she wants to be. 
However, it seemed as though Gladys wasn't aware of this and there was a slight bit of resistance which was present, but I guess time will tell with that. With Mrs. Winterton failing to make the evening a disaster, I feel we're going to see her resort to other measures in order to get under Bertha's skin. Peggy and Mr. Fortune This was the most dangerous arc in the episode. Before Peggy went down south, her mother said to her, don't look at white folk in the eye, don't leave the group and keep your mouth shut and we saw Mr. Fortune do the complete opposite of that. Following us seeing the black community finding a way to improve the way that white people perceived them, and them also bettering their position in society, we saw that there was still some resistance to that progression. Mr. Fortune and Peggy were having dinner, and at the end of the meal, two white men walked in and were speaking to the owner of the restaurant in a way which was extremely derogatory, and it appeared that maybe she was once enslaved by him as he used phrases such as, you know what I like. He was acting as if she was subhuman and like the laws hadn't changed. This caused Mr. Fortune to speak up and push one of the white men to the ground, which then resulted in Peggy and himself having to leave and seek shelter somewhere for the night before getting on the first train home in the morning. Following the disruption, a mob came out and they were a matter of feet away from running into them. But luckily, Peggy and Mr. Fortune were undetected. Mr. Fortune's actions were that of somebody that had suffered in the past and it felt like it was always going to happen. In the previous episode, he was having a heated discussion with Mr. Washington over the fact that he believed that white people wouldn't change. So even though he was standing up for those in the room in this episode, it felt like it was coming. It was in the scene that followed that we saw something which we were all thinking would eventually happen. Peggy and Mr. Fortune shared a romantic kiss together. It always felt like this was going to be on the cards, especially with the dialogue that was being spoken between them and the awkward encounter that they had in the last episode. Larry Russell's Discovery One moment in this episode that I thought was interesting to see unfold was that Mr. Roebling, the person who was the engineer of the bridge that was being unveiled, wasn't actually in charge of the development plans. His wife, Mrs. Roebling, was the brain behind the structure that was set to be one of the grandest in the world at the time. We saw that she lived in silence about what she did due to the fact that if it were to ever be revealed that it was a woman behind the bridge, then society would treat the amazing masterpiece differently. It was a good way of showing us the lack of opportunity that women had back then and how they had to lie in order to express their talents. With Larry Russell now knowing, I do wonder if he may spill the news and he could end up jeopardizing the unveiling of the bridge. Cousin Dashiell and Marion these two characters have been growing closer over the course of the season, and I think that despite the fact that Marion does like Dashiell, there is an ounce of resistance there. We first saw this in last week's episode where Frances was saying how she essentially wanted her to slot into the family, and in this week's episode, when marriage was mentioned, Marion's face turned quite straight as she walked off. Plus also, when she was speaking with Aunt Ada about Reverend Forte and knowing that he was the one, Marion kind of said, I hope that I know when the time comes for me. So it does make me wonder if she doesn't actually care for Dashiell in the capacity of wanting to get married to him. But I guess that's something we'll see more of as time goes on. George Russell's decision. The final thing in this episode, which I think carried large importance, was around George Russell and the strikes that are looking like they're going to happen from his workers. There was a line which was spoken, which was, if you want revolution, you must pick up your weapons and use them. This shows that a bloody meeting is something which is potentially set to arrive when George faces off against the Union when the strikes happen in next week's episode, something which could go against the Russells if deaths or injuries do occur. Overall review I thought this was a good episode of the show. I thought it followed on from the previous episode well and, like I said, I feel it was the calm before the storm. This time, we saw resolution on all fronts, but I don't think that's going to be the case moving forwards. We're going to be seeing disruption with the Russells, whether that be with Bertha and Mrs. Winterton, Bertha and the Academy, George and the Union, or Larry and Miss Blaine. There's so many things that could go wrong for them. They truly are taking center stage in this season, and I quite like it because there's a lot going on with them. I thought the scene in the restaurant in Tuskegee was a powerful one. It showed the danger of what it was like to be a black person in that time and the division that was present in society. Not knowing who to be fearful of and who was against you having your own freedom, something which seems crazy in the modern day, so it got that across well. With the next episode being titled Warning Shots, it makes me think that this could have something to do with the strikes, but also with Mrs. Winterton. Maybe she's going to do something which could show Bertha that she means business. Time will tell with that, but regardless, I'm really looking forward to it.